Hi, my name is Mary. Today, FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today, FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milenia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkripi and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bar. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In this bulletin, murder remanded new water project commissioned and a sila sila to stand trial later this year from the studios of fbc suva Deva Lindua. a 28 year old man alleged to have killed his defecto partner's two-year-old child has been further remanded in custody by the suva high court Christopher Narayan is charged with one count of murder. He was charged along with his 20-year-old defector partner, Luisa Maria Kumar. However, the prosecution filed a no-leg prosecute and only Narayan now faces a murder charge. It is alleged that in Nakasi on March 4th this year, Narayan and Kumar had a violent argument. The child was later found unconscious in their home by her mother and was pronounced dead at the Valilevu Health Center. The state today informed the court that they will be filing additional disclosures. The matter has been adjourned to July 2nd. Meanwhile, Narayan pushed aside the camera of a journalist outside court who was trying to take a video of him. The escorting police officer handled the situation and warned Narayan not to repeat his actions and to apologize. The police officer told Narayan that the journalist was just doing her job. There are claims that there is pressure on some banks in the country to get in more deposits from their customers. Fiji Bank and Finance Sector Employees Union National Secretary Sailesh Naidu says they talk to their members on a regular basis and this issue has come up. Naidu says this is the issue for most other banks except one or two. Because uh, if you look at the figures in the major banks, uh, except for one or two, uh, well, they have been lending money uh, to the market uh, and the gap between the uh, deposits and the loans figures he has been narrowing down uh, for some time now. No? However, Chair of the Association of Banks in Fiji, Rakesh Ram, says that he is not aware of banks tightening up their lending or are seeking for a high level of deposit to lend money. The Education Ministry, under its Tropical Cyclone Rehabilitation Program, has constructed more than 400 new school blocks. While commissioning one of the new classroom blocks for Nawangavesi Primary School in Ra, Education Minister Rosie Akbar says some schools are still being rebuilt and they're working on getting this done as soon as possible. Akbar says $240 million has been spent by the government for rehabilitation of schools. The new classroom block will benefit 91 students. Instruction was fix the schools and get the children back inside uh, schools as fast as we can. So for that purpose, we had tents, etc., so that education could continue. And we did continue, and we are into the third year of that. Former Fiji Sevens player Amin Noni Nasilasila facing a rape charge will stand trial in September at the Suva High at the Lotoka High Court. Rather, Nasilasila appeared before the Suva High Court this morning. The 26-year-old is alleged to have raped a 24-year-old woman in Olosara Singatoka in December last year. The state informed the court that the complainant is currently in the United States and had indicated that she is available for trial at any time. The four-day trial will commence at the Lotoka High Court on September 16th. The matter has been adjourned to September 2nd for pre-trial conference. The super rugby match between the Chiefs and Crusaders will promote the Fijian brand to the world. Tourism Minister Pramila Kumar says the economic benefits of the game to Fiji are more than evident. She adds that the media plays an important role in the coverage of the much-anticipated game. The game that will be held on Saturday, through media coverage, we will be uh, promoting the Fijian brand and will be signaling uh, this particular message that we are ready to host international events. You know, Fiji is a country where we are crazy about rugby. 
and nothing beats any rugby game hosting, you know, if we are able to host on our soil. The Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission has assured residents of G2 Estate that those who qualify for the housing units at the Langilangi Housing Project will get justice. Commission Chief Executive Joel Abraham says they're currently investigating the misuse of funds and other issues pertaining to the housing project. Abraham says, also says that those who do not meet the criteria will be given an eviction notice to accommodate more than 70 households who actually qualify for these flats. The government also assured residents of G2 Estate that they will develop this area for them as they have taken over the project. The government invested a massive $12.7 million for this project, but this did not eventuate as promised by the People's Community Network. The PPC is here to ensure that consumer rights are protected and that absolutely no one can exploit Fijians. This should serve as a stern warning for individuals and entities that are contemplating to take unfair advantage of Fijian consumers. This will not be tolerated. <coughs> 26 households in Nandobu village, Naitasiri, will now be able to access clean and safe drinking water. This comes after Minister for Infrastructure, Chony Usumate, commissioned their new water project yesterday. Usumate says the government has invested $71,000 in this project and is prioritizing access to portable water. The minister believes that accessing safe drinking water for Fijians is fundamental to future development. The project includes a newly constructed dam and a brand new $10,000 gallon tank, which holds up to around 45,000 liters of water. The minister says part of the project was the installation of 12 new showers and 12 new standpipes with slabs. Coming up, exciting finish at the pair of sevens and major blow for Fiji women's soccer side. Stay with us. This weekend's Paris Sevens is building up to be one of the most exciting finishes to the World Series in recent times. The Fiji Airways Sevens side will be running onto the field with a winning attitude tomorrow, carrying the nation's hope for a series title victory. With Fiji and USA neck and neck for the series title, there'll be no love lost in the city of love for the next three days. Uh, our sights, we know it's not going to be easy by any stretch, but our sights are to go one better than what we did Hong Kong, Singapore, and uh, you know, win this tournament. And that's our intention going into this weekend is to win it. The Fijian Seven side will once again be banking on the Sea of Blues in Paris as they battle it out for the last round of the World Seven Series in France tomorrow. All Blacks and Crusaders inside centre Ryan Crotty can't wait to get out on the field with his side and entertain the local crowd. Crotty is one of the players who is expected to run out for the All Blacks at the World Cup later this year. The 30-year-old says the local crowd is always amazing. Crotty will team up in the midfield with Jack Goodhue tomorrow against the Chiefs at the ANZ Stadium in Suva. He says the Crusaders will go out tomorrow and make it a memorable moment for fans. This is one of the reasons the Crusaders will play with flair just like the flying Fijians, according to Crotty. I mean, Fijians are renowned for exciting, offloading, running, uh, high tempo rugby. So um, that's what they love. I remember last time we played here, I think there was two Mexican waves going one way and then one going the other way in the warm-up yeah. so I, I think that's the excitement and um, energy that, that we feed off the, the fans here and we've always had such great support so um, we hope to get that again but um, if we just play to our potential then hopefully that uh, the fans will uh, enjoy that. 
all those flying Fijians in the World Cup squad playing for the Fijian Latui will not feature for the Fijian draw in time for the National Rugby Championship. This was confirmed by the Fiji Rugby Union Chief Executive John O'Connor, saying that the players will be in camp for the flying Fijian squad to the 2019 Rugby World Cup. The camp will start for the Flying Fijians from 1st July. Meanwhile, Latui coach Seni Rusi Serwakula says this weekend's Skipper Cup will showcase players from the team. The Flying Fijians uh, have a different uh, pathway. We are, uh, they are playing for the last two weeks to give them uh, mm -hmm. game time expo exposure at high level. But when they are marching into camp for the, for the Flying Fijians, then they are fully devoted to the Flying Fijians. And uh, unless they don't make the World Cup squad, then they will be considered back for the Brewer squad. The Junior Weightlifting Championship is expected to rake in $11 million worth of economic activity. Oceania National Olympic Committee President Dr. Robin Mitchell says that economically there's a huge benefit to the country. He says that it is very hard to measure the exposure that Fiji will be getting from this event. The Junior Weightlifting Championship will begin from tomorrow at the FMF Gymnasium and end next Saturday. Weightlifting Fiji President Atma Hamaharaj says that in their submission to the government, the total economic benefit will be around $11 million. That was on the basis of the normal entries that they receive for the World Championships and discounted a little bit because we thought that we are too far from everybody, but this is shaping to be the biggest championship ever. So once the championship finishes, we will prepare a economic, uh, be the benefits, economic benefit analysis and we'll be presenting that to the government as part of our exercise. USA-based Trina Davis has been ruled out of the Vodafone national women's team for the Tri-Nations series in Vanuatu next week. Coach Marika Rondu says the team would definitely miss her services, but they have no choice but to go with local players. With Davis being one of the key players for the side, the women's team will need to dig deep without Davis. Davis has been a great addition to the Fiji squad, scoring nine goals in their eight appearances during the OFC Nations Cup qualifiers in Fiji and OFC Nations Cup in New Caledonia last year. Uh, at the moment, uh, she's not. Uh, she still on my hand. She had a uh, surgery a few months ago. So we'll still wait for that to, to actually take, take place. Uh, and that takes time. So we'll still work with uh, the local players uh, going on to this, uh, this few games. A weak trough of low pressure remains slow moving to the north of Fiji. The associated cloud and showers affects the northern parts of the group. And that was your FBC News Now. Remember to join us at 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For these stories and others, you can also tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Have a great day and a good weekend. In Lombasa. I'm Kritika from Jax Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot.